It's the final game of the weekend, and it's the big one here in Boys Division II as the number one seed and defending champion Chico Panthers take on the Pleasant Valley Vikings in a crosstown rivalry, and the stage is set right here at Chico State University's Acker Gymnasium. I'm Jeff Kurtz alongside Nick Dobas. Nick, as we look at today's game, these two teams so familiar with each other, not just this season, but over the years. But still, you got to get your blood rolling when it's a Pleasant Valley Chico matchup, especially when there is a title on the line. The teams met this year. They split the series. What do you see happening in today's ball game? What do we expect? Well, I expect the, uh, the stands to keep filling up as they have been all afternoon for this one. And, you know, I expect Chico to play with a fast pace, try to get away from the size of Pleasant Valley. And, you know, the last time, uh, they, the last couple times they played, they... Panthers outscored were out excuse me they outscored the Vikings 32 to 17 in the second and third quarters of game 1 but they have combined to outscore PV 52 to 32 in the fourth quarter in their last meetings so if Pleasant Valley wants to stay in this thing they have to play they really have to play a complete game because even though they've proven the hang with the Panthers for three quarters letting Chico score 26 points twice in the fourth quarters isn't going to cut it. Head coach Kirk Bruckler for in his fourth year at the helm of the Chico Panthers said in game one we fouled them a lot let them get to the free throw line they won the game from there in game two we got back on track fouled less and we ended up winning the ball game going away. That's my piece right there. Kirk Bruckler didn't say going away. I'm adding that. Let's keep that. We're trying to keep the bulletin board fodder away from all you fans out there. Meanwhile, for Pleasant Valley, Tim Keating in his first year, after taking over for a long time, Pleasant Valley coach Randy Gilzine said, you know, in the first game, we played a really good ball game, did what we wanted to do. In the second game, the kids kind of rested on their laurels, thought, well, we did this once already. We can just roll in there and do it again. And they got blown out. He says, we're hungry. We're mentally and physically ready. We've done all the X's and O's. We're prepared. Yeah, and they're really going to need Blake Marchand to be hungry. 13 points, three rebounds, and two and a half assists a game, which leads the team. He's going to have to need a complete game. Also, Zach Elderidge, six and a half rebounds a game, shooting 58% on the floor. So if those two can connect early and often, they'll have a great chance of winning this one. Kirk Bruckler saying that one of the keys to the game is making sure that Chico does stop Marchand, who is an outstanding player. Also, limit... She, uh, limit Pleasant Valley's easy buckets, keep them off the boards. And then the other thing is not to force the action. Chico likes to get up and down the floor, but they also can't tr just go to the transition game and try to force the action in the transition game. Coach Bruckler talking about recognition where if we don't have the fast break, let's transition into a set, guys, and not try to force the ball inside. And that's right. And if you're the Vikings, you have to know where Jesse Holmes is on the court at all times. Not only is he dangerous on the football field, but he has scorched the Vikings on the basketball court as well. Holmes is averaging 14 points a game, but has averaged 20 points a game against the Vikings this season and is shooting an outstanding and has made, I should say, 47 three-pointers this season. So they all, so the Vikings have to know where Holmes is on the court at all times. The analysis complete. The game set to start after the national anthem, folks. You're following the action here on PlayOnSports.com, your destination for high school sports and the Northern Section Basketball Championships. National Anthem complete. We are set and ready to go here 
at Chico State. Nick, one final question for you. Neither one of these teams has played a competitive game for a while. And not just because they've been blowing people out. They're the only two teams in Division II in the bracket. Pleasant Valley's last game was on the 15th of February. Chico's on the 13th. Are we going to see some rust out there? I think you might see a little bit of rust. What I'm more concerned about is the emotions of the game. How are these youngsters? It's going to be a very loud environment here. Acker Gym is packed. How did these two young teams handle the emotions, handle the intensity early in this ball game. Pleasant Valley as the number two seed is the visiting team. They are in the navy blue jerseys with a light blue lettering. Navy blue shorts, they're going right to left. Chico, the home team, has the number one seed. They are in the white jerseys with red lettering, the white shorts. They are going left to right in the center circle and ready to jump. Clayton Welch for Chico and Marcus Habib for Pleasant Valley. And Chico is going to win the opening tip. Starting lineup Barack Karata Kelly, Clayton Welch, Tanner Binsfield, Jesse Holmes, Josh Martin for Chico, Tommy DeArmond, Tyler Tullius, Blake Marchant, Marcus Habib, and Zach Eldridge for Pleasant Valley. Chico on the attack, layup strong. Maybe some of those emotions you're talking about as Tanner Binsfield misses the look from the right hand side. Yeah, and that's the advantage that the Panthers need to take real advantage of is capitalizing on those second opportunities. Backdoor pass and layup as Diarman connects with Marchant. Beautiful backdoor cut there, and that's gonna get the Vikings crowd going early. Into the front court with the basketball, Chico rolling right side. A between the legs dribble, and then a three-pointer for Jesse Holmes. Like I said, the Vikings need to know where 22 is at all times and make sure they get a hand in his face. Pleasant Valley, down low into the post. Good ball movement by the Vikings here. Now they're gonna reset the offense. 15 on the shot clock, 6.50 on the game clock, opening quarter. Turnaround jumper, free throw line, no good. Rebounded underneath by Chico. That was Karata Kelly with the board. Here's Holmes all the way, blocking foul. Nice take there by Holmes. And it looks like Diarman was just a bit late on that to get the charge there. A great effort by DeArmond, but you're absolutely right, Nick. He was just a step slow. Not even a step slow, maybe a half step. <laughs> Holmes to the free throw line for two. That is the first foul of the game. Clock stopping with 6.40 left first quarter. Free throw good. Our producer today, Ron Borges. Daniel Luna running the camera for us. Jeff Kurtz alongside Nick Dobas. Holmes makes both. And making that first three and making those free throws, it looks like he's already in an early zone. I think Holmes wakes up in the morning in the zone on the basketball court. <laughs> that must Martin. be nice. Marchant along the baseline, what a pass! And the layup for Eldridge. Vikings are having some very nice cuts right now on that offense, slicing through the Panthers' defense. That was a no-look pass by Marchant. Holmes, what a spin move, kick out, three-pointer on the way, in and out, no. Battle for the rebound, Chico's got it. Backing it out, Binsfield. Holmes is gonna take another three. Front iron, Marchant the rebound. The two guards going at it here in the early going. Vikings really need to slow down the pace and utilize their size inside. And we got a hold outside by Josh Martin. His first, team's first. 5.51 left, first quarter. 5-4 year score, Chico leading. Vikings have done a very nice job with the backdoor cuts, getting their guys open. Tyler Tullius now can't find anybody open. Hits Marchant in the corner. Nice one dribble pull up, 17 footer strong. Rebound Binsfield. Binsfield gives to Martin. Martin's going to set the offense. Nice fake on the pass. Can't get the running at 10 footer to go off the glass. Game right now being played at Pleasant Valley's pace, wouldn't you say, Nick? Absolutely, and that's exactly what they need. Chico is going to look to run the court as early as often. Aldridge with the ball in the post. Pump fakes, puts a man up in the air. Binsfield blocked from the backside. Pleasant Valley will keep it 14 on the shot clock. Great help there by Binsfield to help out his man down low, not to let anything easy go in. 
It's almost time of possession is going to be critical in this game, and that's usually a football stat, not a basketball one, but already Pleasant Valley's run 20 seconds off the shot clock. And they have to recognize that Chico now in a 2-3 zone. What it also does, it really takes Chico out of a rhythm, not let them get in that fast pace. Four on the shot clock, three, Tullius on the drive, the floater short, gets his own rebound, fresh 35. Marchant's going to take a three, good. I think secondary rebounds could play big in this game. Chico's already had a couple, and that was a big one there for the Vikings. That's one of the things Coach Bruckler was saying, we got to keep the Vikings off the boards. Binsfield, high post, fade away, Karata Kelly short. One and done as Habib collects the rebound. We already had an upset in girls division two. Chico, the number two seed beating Pleasant Valley. The Vikings boys hoping to return the favor. 418 left in the first quarter, 15 on the shot clock. Marchant's gonna pull up for another three. Bank, no, from straight away. Three on two, nice feed, Karata Kelly from Martin. And that was a great pass there by Martin. Sometimes that could be hard to read when you're on the fast break, but he delivered the ball at the exactly the right time. 3.55 remaining, first quarter. DeArmond with the ball, high post. Turn around, Eldridge, no. Binsfield goes up high for the rebound, long outlet to Holmes. To Karata Kelly, who can't come up with the ball. He wanted a trip call, but I don't think you're going to get that there. I'm actually surprised that Holmes didn't kind of look that off and take it himself. Yeah. He had a nice lane open there. We're tied at seven. And here we go again. As you said, the Vikings taking the arrow of the ball. This is as close as you can get to a four corners in the shot clock era. DeArmond with the ball. Nice defense by, oh, oh, great feed, high post. Eldridge goes up, he's gonna hit the bucket and draw the foul. Eldridge has been working hard down low, hasn't gotten a lot of buckets to go, but has the strength to get that one to go. Nicely done. That foul on Clayton Welch's first. Substitution, Habib out, Reese Kettle in for Pleasant Valley. Eldridge trying to complete the old school three point play. He does not. Nice rebound by Welch. Fast moving first quarter, 3-10 remaining. Here's Martin, Holmes around a pick. Holmes is likely to stand there and pull up for three <laughs> as he is to pass. That three pointer is short and we got a foul on DeArmond. And for DeArmond, that's gonna be his second personal. And Eldridge, even though he's doing a nice job on the other end, didn't get the box out there, giving Chico opportunity for that secondary rebound that we talked about. Well, yeah, it was a long rebound as well. Welch just beat DeArmond to the ball. DeArmond and Eldridge are gonna come out. Into the game, Habib returns. And first look at Giovanni McClellan. Each team with two team fouls. Martin around a pick into the key. No look, pass underneath. Karata Kelly is fouled. The Panthers showing a lot of movement early in their offense, trying to get that size from the Vikings uncomfortable. Reese Kettle, the personal. Team's third. Karata Kelly, it's the first free throw. He's got three points in the game. Each team, only two players have scored. Blake Marchant has five, Eldridge four for Pleasant Valley. Holmes five, Karata Kelly at the moment three. And he will stay there for Chico. 9-8 our score. 2.40 left first quarter. Here's a three pointer, quick shot, back iron, no good from Tullius. Holmes front court takes it all the way. Kick out Martin. He'll shoot a three from the corner. Good. Nice facilitation there by Holmes. All eyes are on him. B smartly drives in and kicks it out. 2.15 left. Chico up by two. Tullius is going to take another three. In and out, no. Battle for the rebound, Binsfield. 
we're at the two minute mark. Holmes on the penetration, great spin move, travel. Yeah, he might have gotten away with that in the NBA these days, but it's <laughs> still only two steps in high school. And two levels removed from the NBA. <laughs> Tullius is going to come out. Let's reset the lineup for you for Pleasant Valley. Ryan Trouty in, Marchant, Habib, McClellan, and Kettle. And McClellan has to be a lot more aggressive and want the bar. Ball more. He's got some good size down low. He's going to get some looks if Marchand can draw a double team. Now McClellan gets the ball, jump hook from five, rims out. Karata Kelly had the ball for a moment before it was knocked out of bounds by Pleasant Valley. A minute 37 left. Holmes in the front court. Jump shot on the way, no good from Welch. Very nice shot there by McClellan, not to charge all the way out there, split the difference and force him to make that shot. Left side with the basketball, around a pick, 23 on the shot clock, 110 on the game clock. Ball is swung, here's the drive, penetration cut off is Trouty, now he's trapped in the corner, looking for help, throws the ball up for grabs, Binsfield the steal, gonna take it all the way, he will be fouled. Nice, nice job by Habib, helping him up after the play. Nice job by Binsfield there, sensing the pressure, hesitates, makes sure he draws the foul and gets a free trip to the charity line. 55.6 seconds left in the first quarter. It's a fourth team foul against Pleasant, Fa Pleasant Valley. Binsfield at the line for two. Well, so far, Chico's doing a good job avoiding the foul bug. Only two fouls committed, only one free throw by the Vikings. So check off that so far for Coach Bruckler in the first half, first quarter. Second free throw also good. About a 20 second differential between the shot and the game clock. Ball movement, Trouty left side, Tullius, around a pick by Eldridge, who's just checked back in. Marshawn out of the game at the moment. Binsfield another steal. The Panthers have done a nice job limiting the inside play of the Vikings so far with weak side help. Two second differential now. Vikings man to man. Martin to Holmes who's double teamed. Skip pass into the middle of the key. Welch all the way, layup is in. Very nice hesitation by Welch there to freeze his man and then take it to the bucket. Tulia's front court gives to Kettle. Kettle, nice D by Holmes. Four, now three, down low. Eldridge has it, goes up, layup is in, and that will end the quarter. Well, clearly Eldridge is going to be critical in this game, but Chico's going to take a four-point advantage into the first quarter break. 15 to 11, our score. You're following the action here in the northern section on your destination for high school sports. Playonsports.com. Do you want to watch more of your school's great matchups like the game you're enjoying here tonight? Well, tell your school to sign up for the Play On Sports School Broadcast Program. The program allows schools to broadcast all their games and other activities on the web. For more information, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. Well, Nick, an interesting first half, that's, or first quarter that started out with Pleasant Valley establishing their tempo, but also turning the ball over a little bit more than they would like. Yeah, I think so. Chico has done a really nice job for the most part outside of Eldridge of helping neutralize the inside game. Um, they've had a lot of weak side help there to really neutralize that, but Eldridge has had a very nice first quarter. One of the things that Coach Keating said is turnovers are going to be key, and that certainly played a role in the first quarter. Our officials today, folks, we'd be remiss if we didn't mention their names. Daniel Sanchez, Ron Drummel, and John Cascarina. And our head referee, Daniel Sanchez, will be giving the ball to Kettle for the inbounds pass. Kettle, Habib, Marchant, Tullius, Eldridge on the floor for Pleasant Valley, going right to left. Binsfield, Holmes, Karata Kelly, Martin, 
And Welch on the floor for Chico, your original starting five for the Panthers. Panthers trying to work that low game with a high screen. There's Eldridge again. And Eldridge will lay up. That is working right now for Pleasant Valley. Yeah, they're doing a good job setting him up high with the screen. And he's having some nice rolls to the bucket. Martin with Chico's first possession of the second quarter. Holmes. It's from 16 short. Nice rebound, Welch. Rada Kelly is held and is on the drive to the baseline. That foul is going to go against Kettle, his first, no, excuse me, his second personal. Yeah, I bet he thought he had good positioning there, but he just leaned into him just a little bit, just enough to draw the foul. The arm bar, where you fold your arm into an L position with that left hand and hold off a player. And that was a good call by our officiating crew. Martin, backing it out, picked up by Marchant. Nice battle here. Here's Karata Kelly for three. No good, and Welch another offensive rebound. Welch is proving to be a critical utility man here early. Tullius knocks the ball away from Martin. Marchant picks up the ball, goes deep, and it's going to be knocked out of bounds by Chico. 6.48 left in the half. Let's see if Pleasant Valley can work something here on the inside to Eldridge to get a quick bucket. Eldridge is going to set a pick for Habib. Kick out Marchant for a long range three back iron. Rebounded by Kettle. Both teams snagging some offensive rebounds right now from each other. Maybe that's balancing itself out. I, think I so. guess it's what you do with the extra possessions. <laughs> There's Eldridge. That's a good idea to do something with on the extra possession. Reverse layup. No, he's fouled. What I really like about Eldridge is he's got really nice footwork on the inside. Great work to penetrate. Didn't see it was on the weak side. Had the wherewithal to turn around and go to the free throw line. Yeah, he showed right and then went back left. That foul is on Jesse Holmes, his first team's third. Eldridge makes the first free throw. Now one of two from the line. Leading his team in scoring with seven. Excuse me, nine. Make that 10. He's got two thirds of the points for Pleasant Valley. Yeah, and Jesse Holmes has been somewhat quiet here since that fiery opening. Binsfield around a pick into the key. And he is fouled. Looks like it might have been on Kettle. It's a sixth team foul against Pleasant Valley and the first on Eldridge actually. Kettle was in the neighborhood. He's breathing a sigh of relief. That would have been his third. <laughs> Bensfield first free throw short. Welch is going to come out of the game. He will be replaced by Devin Bauer making his first appearance. Nice job by Welch. A couple of big offensive rebounds here in the second quarter. Took the words right out of my mouth right there. Binsfield one out of two. 6-10 remaining in the half. Chico picks up full court. Marshawn, a one-man press break, takes it all the way. Can't finish the layup. It's going to be out of bounds off of the Vikings. And I think that's what the Panthers need to do, is really just kind of wake up, pick up the tempo a little bit, and get back in familiar waters. Well, and that forced Pleasant Valley into a tough shot by Marshawn. There are opportunities to break the press and convert, but Marshawn got in a little too deep. Martin, cut off by Marshawn. Holmes going to call a play. Nice drive, takes it into traffic. Marshawn, the steal has a man up in front. Kettle gives to Kettle. Layup is in. Beautiful around play there by Marshawn to collapse on Holmes. Really suffocate him to get the steal and beautiful cross court pass. Pleasant Valley has a lead. Under 5.30 remaining. Binsfield on the drive. Nice feed underneath. Devin Bauer is in the book. Very beautiful dish there by Binfield, and that's going to get the Panthers a little bit back into this game. Tullius in the front court to Eldridge. 
Good ball movement. I thought Eldridge might have a move to the bucket there, but he decided to back it out. Pleasant Valley sticking with the game plan. Tullius gets a switch and takes it into the key all the way with the left hand no. Battle for the rebound and Martin comes away with it then as it's stolen by Tullius. Oh boy, Kettle had Habib on a back door for a minute. <laughs> I was gonna say if only he had eyes on the back of his head, that would have been a beautiful pass. Pass into Eldridge, back out is gonna be stolen. And now Marchant with the steal right back. Ball loose on the floor. Here's Binsfield all the way, gets the layup. Nice job by Binsfield. Obviously mismatch there on the sides of the layup, puts it just high enough off the glass to connect. Well, Pleasant Valley's had two instances, Nick, where Eldridge has gotten Martin on him on a switch, and they haven't been able to find him in the post with a mismatch. I know, they really need to utilize that. Here it is again, on the switch. Marchant's gonna take it, he gives to Eldridge. Eldridge in a tough spot, though it's a turnover. Yeah, see, that's one that Marchant really should have just taken to the basket, because Eldridge was already looking for the rebound. That's something that they, that's been working really well early in this first half, and they just need to keep going to. Well, it's recognition. Marchant was ahead of Eldridge and tried to dish it back to him. On the other two instances, Marchant was backed out, and Eldridge had moved down into the post, or whoever the ball handler was, had, Eldridge had moved down to the post. Timeout on the floor, 3.49 remaining in the half. 20 to 17 Chico in this boys division two championship game. Play on Sports is on Facebook and Twitter, giving you news and information and links to great highlights. Follow us at Play on Sports on both Facebook and Twitter. You can also access thousands of live and on-demand games on YouTube at youtube.com slash playonnetwork. Keep up with all the high school action every week from your destination for high school sports, playonsports.com. You know, Jeff, what I really like there, though, even though Pleasant Valley didn't really connect on that last series, they've really picked up the intensity a little bit and forced quite a few turnovers there in that little spurt. Jerry Magassi in the on the floor for Chico now. Martin, Karata Kelly, Holmes, Welch, and Magassi for the Panthers after the Pleasant Valley timeout. Kettle picks up Karata Kelly. Marchant, Eldridge, Habib, Tullius for the Vikings. Into the post, Holmes around a triple team kick out. Karata Kelly open three, strong. Nice box out by Eldridge. I like that the Panthers try to get Jesse Holmes the ball in a different scenario other than outside the arc. Just couldn't connect there with Karata Kelly. Marchant with it. Marchant's gonna drive, take it all the way. Squeezes a layup in there, can't get it to fall. Pushing, nice pass. Here's Welch, he's gonna get the bucket and draw the foul. What a pass by Magassi. Panthers right at home with that full court attack right there. Very nice job to finish it. If you didn't bring your running shoes to this track meet, <laughs> you're gonna be left in the dust. That foul on Habib, his second. Team seventh. Welch free throw, no good. Habib the rebound. Marshawn with a second to spare, gets it across the timeline. Marshawn along the baseline, a floater from 10 short. Rebound Welch, here comes Chico again. They've got a three on two, now a four on two. Here's Martin for three. Wow, that's a really tough shot. A lot of times your momentum can carry you and can really force a long shot, but nice job to collect himself there. Pleasant Valley now trailing by eight. Blink, and all of a sudden you're down almost by double digits. Tullius driving baseline, goes up, goes around everybody, and we'll be going to the line. And the bucket as well. The Vikings have had most success tonight when they've been attacking the interior of that matchup zone by the Panthers. They continue to do that. They can climb back in and possibly steal the lead in the waning minutes here in the sec first half. Nagasi with a personal is first. Free throw good. 2.10 left in the half.
Holmes, who's been quiet of late, gives to Martin. Outside, Magassi, the left-hander for three short. Rebounded by Tommy DeArmond, who's checked back in the game. Marchant out at the moment. Tullius running the point. Kettle on the crossover. Kettle on the drive, Kettle all the way. Floats in a tough shot along the baseline, can't get it to fall. Yeah, and they've had a number of layups that have just bounced out or just short. Karata Kelly, great recognition that he had the angle on Habib, who just picked up his third. Karata Kelly, also an all-star wide receiver for the Chico Panthers last season, showing you that he can kick it from second to third gear, or even fourth gear, <laughs> that nice little spurt right there. I think he skipped third gear. A minute 33 to play. Magassi's going to come out. Binsfield back in. Marchant is checked back into the game. Kettle out. Second free throw no good and the rebound by the newly checked in Chad Olson. Tulia is still running the point. Trailing by six is Pleasant Valley. It's going to be a really critical 70 seconds coming up here. Marchant stepped on the sideline. And a turnover. Very critical minute and 15 seconds here for the Pleasant Valley Vikings. Only down by six right now, but they really can't let Chica force the issue and extend their lead right before the half. A minute 10 left. Martin, this is Holmes on the wing, Holmes on the drive, right side, Binsfield, three-pointer, no. Welch, another offensive rebound. And Welch is proving that he could be the real X factor in this game so far. That's his third here in the quarter. Holmes, a long-range three-air ball. Welch saves and then throws it. Here's another three by Martin, and Holmes, another rebound underneath to Binsfield. And Binsfield is fouled. Pleasant Valley just kind of standing around there yeah. when the ball goes up. They need to not look at the ball, but find the closest man and box out. Well, Welch is the only guy who was still in play. I mean, that ball went off Karata Kelly. His back was turned to the play, thinking the ball was going out of bounds on the air ball by Holmes. A great effort by Welch, who is proving, who's really submitted some excellent minutes here for the Panthers. Binsfield at the line for the front end of a 1-1. Can't get it to fall. Six second differential between the shot and the game clock. Amazingly, despite four offensive rebounds on that last sequence, and good offensive rebounding by Chico in the quarter, they're only up by six. It's gonna be a four point game, 17 on the shot clock. Marchand taking his time. Now 10, eight, Marchand gonna float in a three short, gets the rebound, put back, no, he's fouled. That yeah, was a tough shot he took there, but nice stick to itiveness to stay with the shot, try to get the put back, and get to the free throw line with 10 seconds well, left. That's, that's Jesse Holmes' second personal foul? No, it's Welch's second personal foul. You almost had a lot of Panthers fans worried there for a second. I know I did. <laughs> you, could see, you could hear the heart palpitations from here, couldn't you? Marshawn, first free throw is in, first point of the second quarter. Back in the game, Ryan Trouty for Pleasant Valley. Eldridge in as well. Olsen stays in the game, Marchant and Tullius. Marchant makes one out of two. Rebound to Karata Kelly, eight seconds left. Holmes glides up the floor with five, with four, with three. Holmes spin move all the way. Can't get the layup. And a blocking foul is the call. Yeah, the Vikings bench wanted to charge right there. But just like earlier in this game, I think the Vikings were just a hair off the mark of getting the charge. That's on Zach Eldridge, his second. These could be big free throws for Holmes. He's been pretty cold here in the second quarter. If he makes a couple of these, he might get a little bit of confidence back and find his rhythm. Air ball, wow. That, that is unexpected. That won't do it. He is scoreless in the second quarter. 
Makes one out of two. Six point game. Tullius long range won't go and Chico will take the lead into the break. 27-21 your score, playonsports.com halftime show coming up in just a few moments folks. Invite you to stay with us. We are your leader in high school sports coverage in the state of California, playonsports.com back with more in just a few.
Halftime continues here on PlayOnSports.com with Chico leading 27-21 at the break. Jeff Kurtz alongside Nick Dobas. Let's break down the scoring for you from the first half. First for the Pleasant Valley Vikings. They were led by Zach Eldridge, who led all scores on both teams with 10 points in the game. Blake Marchant with six. Tyler Tullius with three. Reese Kettle with two. Meanwhile, six players in the book for Chico. Jesse Holmes and Josh Martin with six each. Tanner Binsfield with five. Barack Karata Kelly, Clayton Welch with four apiece. And Devin Bauer with a pair. And as we look at our keys to the ball game, Pleasant Valley was emphasizing we need to cut down on our turnovers. Chico, we need to limit free throw opportunities for Pleasant Valley and keep the Vikings off the boards. I think Chico won that battle in the first half. I think they did. And you know what? They did, but you know what? There were times where they kind of played into Pe Pleasant Valley's pace. And I think in order for them to maintain this lead, they really need to pick up the pace a little bit. And the other thing they really needed to do is get Holmes going. He had a very quiet second quarter. Looked like his confidence was a little shaken up there, but they can find him opportunities either you know from the 15 foot range in just to get that shot going so so he can get that going and for him to facilitate others to score as well because chico is really successful when they get five or six guys in double digits and right now they're not right there you know if you told coach keating before the game nick at the half you'll have one three you'll have had six free throw attempts to chico's 14 and chico will have made three three pointers how many are you down I don't think the answer would have been six. It probably would have been more. No, I think he's very happy, even though his team's down by six. And they've found some very nice opportunities inside with the pick and roll game with Eldridge and other opportunities when they attack that matchup zone. I think what really could hurt them is they really need to tighten up on, or tighten up on the rebounding because Welsh has given the Panthers a lot of opportunities. I think if they can tighten up on the defensive boards, continue to pound on the inside, and... They'll have a very successful four, uh, third and fourth quarter. And the fourth quarter is critical. As I said, they've been outscored 52-32 to 32 combined in the fourth quarter against Chico this year. So we'll see if they have enough gas in the tank. Foul situation. Clayton Welch, who also had five offensive rebounds in the second quarter, has two fouls. He's the only player with really you could call foul trouble for the Panthers. For the Vikings, though, Habib's got three. Reese Kettle off the bench has two, Tommy DeArmond with two, and Zach Eldridge with two. So we'll keep an eye on that situation for Pleasant Valley as the game goes along. Possession arrow will favor Chico. They will have the basketball. Holmes, Welch, Binsfield, Martin, and Karata Kelly. Tullius, Marchant, Eldridge, DeArmond, and Habib on the floor for Pleasant Valley. Chico now going right to left. In the white jerseys, Pleasant Valley left to right in the navy blue. Martin on the dribble. Skip pass near side. Binsfield. Now Chico taking a page out of Pleasant Valley's playbook and running a lot of clock. Spin move inside. Karate Kelly leaves it short. Rebound underneath Eldridge. That might be the longest possession of the year for Chico. It took about <laughs> 25 seconds off the shot clock. Well, I think they just really wanted to come out and put one in the bucket from the get-go. Unfortunately, that didn't happen for them. In the corner, Tullius. Ball swung near side, Marchant. 10 on the shot clock. Marchant splits a double team, floats one from 10 strong. Holmes the rebound. Here is Binsfield for a three in the corner short. Ball loose on the floor. Binsfield gets to a nice hustle play. And now a steal by Marchand. Marchand looking to take it all the way in. Layup, good. Nice job there. Pleasant Valley doing themselves a favor, even though giving up the offensive board, still staying scrappy on defense, turning a turnover into some points. 6.35 left third quarter. And a steal by Marchand. And he's got another wide open layup. And it's a two point game. And we're gonna have a timeout here. Very wise timeout as the Vikings have come out inspired in this second half. And Holmes, or no, excuse me, Martin looks like he's either coming up limping, I'm not quite sure what the deal is. He's got a sleeve on his left knee. 
We'll keep it right here on PlayOnSports.com with 6.27 left in the third quarter. Nick, it almost seems like you said Chico needs to pick up the pace. They seem to have gone even slower. Yeah, they certainly have, and that's just not their ball game. That is not their bread and butter. Obviously, you know, coming out in the half, they wanted to take their time, make sure they get the nice bucket, but that's just not in their DNA. They're going to have to come up, pick up the tempo. They showed that 3-2 zone right there. Maybe they need to switch up to a man here just to pick up the intensity. There's a sign above the rooting section on the Pleasant Valley side across the floor from us that says, slow down, grab ball. <laughs> it's good advice, and Marchant did it a couple of times, grabbing the ball part at least, but it's been Chico who's been slowing down here in the second half. We'll see if they step it up here. Nice move by Binsfield all the way in and throws one up that rolls in. Happy birthday to Tanner B Binsfield. And Eldridge seemed unfazed. Looked like a fly just kind of bounced off his chest right there. Two minutes into the third quarter and Chico's going zone. A matchup zone. Habib's got a free look from the foul line. He hits it. And that's how you break up the zone is by attacking that free throw line right there. Nice shot. Holmes, who's been pretty quiet. Just one point in that second quarter, takes it all the way in and has the ball stripped. Here's DeArmond, gives to Habib, he goes up and is fouled. Yeah, Holmes trying to force it, force the issue right there. And Marchand really coming out with some stout defensive effort right there. That foul is on Karata Kelly, his first, team's first. And at the free throw line is Habib, who makes the first one. You know, given that Habib can tie the game at 29, it's a little bit, the energy level in the gym is kind of flat, don't you think? Yeah, I think so. I, you know, I'll, well, if you're Pleasant Valley, you're pretty happy with that because flat and slow, slow down, grab that ball, that's exactly what you want to do, and that's exactly how they're going to win this ball game. 5.25 to play in the third. Binsfield fakes a three. Holmes around a screen, he'll pull up for three. No good. Rebound, Tullius. DeArmond, high post, Eldridge. Eldridge, one dribble kick out, Tullius sets his feet for a three ball, good! Yeah, that's a beautiful look by Eldridge right there. Grabs it from the high post. Defense collapsed, and he smartly looks weak side for the trifecta. Pleasant Valley's got a lead. Karata Kelly on the drive, takes it all the way in and hits it off the glass. That'll ease a little bit of the Panthers' tensions right there. You know, if Holmes continues in his funk, Karata Kelly is going to have to step up here big in the third quarter. Eldridge gives a pick to DeArmond. Now Chico back into man-to-man. -man. 18 on the shot clock. DeArmond throws the ball away. DeArmond's claiming he got hit on the arm. Official just nods it off and... Letting him have his say, as long as it's not too much. The officials have shown great restraint at points over the weekend. Letting coaches talk, players talk a little bit. The only technical I've seen is that one clerical technical last night. We had a double technical in a girls game oh, earlier today <laughs> with a little bit of an altercation. Oh. That's been it. Here's a three-pointer, Karata Kelly. And the lead is back to two for Chico midway through the third quarter. Chico back in the man-to-man. -man. Marshawn on the drive, and we got a block. Good call. Good call. You could say Marshawn pushed off a little bit, but I think that Binsfield was not squared up. Yeah, that's one of those calls that kind of almost could have gone either way. Binsfield just a little bit out of position right there. Nice shot by Marshawn to force the issue, though. DeArmond to inbound. Second team foul on Chico in the half. Tullius, nice move, great feed down low for the layup. Reese Kettle with a bucket and the beneficiary of that sweet pass from Tullius. Kettle has just checked in. 
replacing, I believe he was replacing Habib, he was. Holmes on the drive, finds Welch. And very nice shot by Holmes there. He knows that he's not feeling his shot right now, so what does he do? Drives to the interior, kicks it to his man, who gets the N1. Tullius picks up his first. 3.29 left in the third. Welch has had a good game. He's had an excellent first half. He's going to need an excellent second half here in order to, for the Panthers to survive the onslaught by the Vikings. And Tullius took his eye off the ball and loses it and then fouls Martin. Yeah, just a slight lack of focus there. Sometimes when you're not expecting the ball, you're looking to make that cut, and then boom, the ball is right in your hip, and you're not expecting it. Eldridge out of the ball game. Giovanni McClellan in. I suspect Eldridge will only sit for about a couple minutes here, just a quick breather, and he'll be right back in. Welch is going to take a three. Good. Clayton Welch, six in the quarter. Leads his team in scoring with 10. And just like that, the lead's back up to six again. Marchant on the drive, all the way, fouled. And we'll go to the line for two. Marchant has really been the spark plug for the Vikings in the second half, coming up with some big steals and really forcing the issue, picking, forcing the Panthers to pick up some fouls here. Pinsfield second, teams third. 2.45 remaining third quarter. He gets the first free throw to fall. Substitution into the game. Nagasi is in. Binsfield will come out. Marchant makes both. Four point game. Holmes on the penetration. Kick out Martin. Martin tries the inside out move. Great battle here. Yeah, Martin, no look, knocked away by Tullius. Yeah, that Martin Marchand matchup is a fun one to watch. <laughs> Too fast. Marchand and Martin sharing a word there, both laughing. Two really small, fast, scrappy guys going at it. Welch, another three short. McClellan the rebound. Arman with a free look to the basket, takes it all the way in, and Welch the block. In the front court, Holmes on the drive, takes it all the way, draws the foul, hits the layup over McClellan. And that was all set up by the beautiful block by Welch there, controlling his body, timing the block perfectly, allowing the Panthers to get out and run and gun. Clayton Welch is the lone sophomore on the roster, but he's playing like a senior. In fact, if you didn't look at your roster, you'd think he is a senior. Yeah, he's a good-sized kid as well and is definitely playing well beyond his years tonight. It's really been Welch and Karate Kelly that have kind of helped steady the ship for the Panthers here in the third quarter and has helped the Panthers maintain their lead. Karate Kelly with five in the quarter, Welch with six, but let's focus on Clayton Welch for a little bit more. In the first half, he had four points but he had five offensive rebounds in the second quarter alone. Here in this quarter, he gets a conventional three-point play, hits one from beyond the arc. A big block there results in Holmes at the line trying to complete another traditional three-point play. Yeah, just all around having a very nice game, becoming that X factor that we really didn't expect to see coming into this game, but is playing, paying off huge dividends for the Panthers right now. And hopefully that and one We'll see if that gets Holmes going a little bit because he's been struggling since the second quarter. Free throw is good. Chico up seven. Their biggest lead of the game is eight. 
Two minutes remaining in the third quarter. Now Chico back in his own, matchup zone. Tullius is fouled by Welch, who almost had a breakaway. That's big, because that's going to be his third foul, and it's probably going to send him to the bench for the remainder. It looks like another. Coach is actually going to keep him in. He's going to have to be very careful, though, and find a way to end this quarter with only three fouls. Kettle in the game. Ryan Trouty in. Eldridge, Marchant, and Habib. Someone needs to come to the ball. And finally, Trouty does. Kettle gets the return pass. Marchant, 30 on the shot clock. Eldridge picked up on a switch. Marchant's going to put up a three ball strong, and the rebound goes to Martin. Holmes down low, Welch. Welch, spin move baseline side, goes up over Eldridge, can't get it to drop. Holmes tries to save it and knocks it off Pleasant Valley. What an effort. Yeah, the star, even though he's been struggling, he's been making a lot of great effort plays in the last few minutes. Tullius is going to replace Marchant. Martin inbound. Right along the baseline. It's going to be knocked out of bounds by Pleasant Valley. Karata Kelly bobbled it, and the Vikings touched it last. Open Welch underneath, layup. That was beautifully set up. The Panthers were looking for the strong side, and Welch made a beautiful cut to the back door, and no one was home. Biggest lead of the game for Chico is nine. Kettle with the ball. Kettle goes left corner. Here's a shot. Tullius, he hits it. I thought he was fouled as well. What a shot by Tullius. Tullius coming up big with his second three of this third quarter. 50 seconds left in the third. Holmes looking to make a move. Instead gets off to Welch. The man of the hour takes it into the key. Kick out Martin. Martin back out to Holmes. 17 on the shot clock. Holmes wants a clear out. Takes it into the post and has it poked away. He traveled. And I think he was just trying to do a little bit too much there on that one. Obviously, he's trying to will his team to extend the lead, but just too many steps. Nine tenths of a second between the shot and the game clock. Nagasi is going to replace Welch in the lineup. That's a smart move there by Coach Bruckler because Welch has three personals. Couldn't agree with you more. Marchant back in the game. He's in for Trouty for offense. And DeArmond is back in as well. So DeArmond, Habib, Tullius, Eldridge, and Kettle. Marchant was in for just a moment, and DeArmond came in for him. Shot clock at 20. Tullius with it with 14. Right side, Kettle with 12. Kettle. Into the corner, Tullius for a three-pointer. Good again. His third free of this quarter, and he's starting to heat up. Here's Martin from half court. And it's a three-point game. Tullius, with his team on the ropes, hits two threes on consecutive possessions, tough shots. A three-point game as we go into the fourth quarter right here on your destination for high school sports, playonsports.com. Enjoy PlayOnSports.com's live coverage of championship basketball from around California as we hit the section in the state championships. March Madness will reign as we bring you all the action from across the state. Join us for championship basketball coverage brought to you by your destination for high school sports. PlayOnSports.com. And while we have the opportunity, did you know that you can watch more of your school's great matchups? Just like the one you're enjoying here tonight. Tell your school to sign up for the Play on Sports School Broadcast Program. The program allows schools to broadcast all of their games and other activities on the web. For more information, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. Three players in double figures for Pleasant Valley, Tullius and Marchand with 12 each, Eldridge with 10, though Eldridge was scoreless in the third. Clayton Welch, a big quarter for Chico. He had eight. 
And he leads his team with 12 points. Holmes and Karata Kelly with nine apiece. Pleasant Valley will start out with the basketball. The final eight minutes of play in a three-point ball game. Tullius on the floor with DeArmond. Kettle, Habib, and Eldridge. Chico counters with Karata Kelly. Binsfield, Welch back in with the three personal fouls. Holmes and Martin. Here's a three by DeArmond. Back iron, no. Battle for the loose ball. It's going to be knocked out of bounds by Chico. Great effort there by Eldridge to contest that rebound and force it out. Inbounds pass Kettle. High pass stolen by Binsfield. Binsfield goes up. And we got a blocking foul on Tullius. Great job by Binsfield. I was actually watching him on that play, and he read that thing just like a safety, watching the eyes of the inbounders, snags it, takes it down, and has an opportunity to put two in the bucket. That is the third on Tullius. The fourth team foul, each team with four team fouls, 7.38 to play in the game. And that could be big because Tullius was really starting to catch fire there, hitting three threes in that third quarter. Binsfield misses the first one. He is now two of six from the free throw line. Two of seven. Some missed opportunities for Chico from the foul line in this game. Chico looks like they're gonna be in their matchup zone once again. Kettle gets open underneath. On the feed from Eldridge. Nice high-low game there by the big man. Three-pointer, Karata Kelly, good. And this guy has really proved to be clutch cargo here in the second half for the Panthers. Nice shot there. Seven minutes to play. Tullius with the ball, looking the post to Kettle. Kettle bounces to the outside, 17 on the shot clock. Kettle into the block to Habib. Fade away, 10-footer is good. That is a tough shot. But he hangs in the air just right and has the touch to connect. Two-point game again. Martin picked up on a switch by Habib. Crossover, kick out, Karata Kelly on the drive. Out to a wide open Binsfield. The three-pointer is flat and short. The ball is recovered by Binsfield. And he's laying on the baseline. But you gotta go after the ball hard if you're Kettle. I mean, Kettle was kind of nonchalantly going for the ball and Binsfield flew in there. Yeah, tip of the cap to Binsfield. He probably could have taken another dribble and walked up to the line to make that a more manageable three, but great effort to rally and get the ball there. Marchant back in the game. Kettle will go out. Eldridge will go out. Chad Olsen in. 6.15 to play. Marchant, Tullius left side. Tullius with 22 on the shot clock, gives to Habib. Tullius looking for a pick from Olsen, swings to DeArmond who walked. Yeah, it's hard. A lot of young kids get that hesitation step right before they dribble. You and he gets caught with it right there. You're in your jump stop position. You take a step back and forward before you put the ball on the floor. Natural thing to do as a human being, but traveling on a basketball court. Holmes, who's been quiet of late, gives to Karata Kelly. 5.45 to go. 25 on the shot clock. Martin, NBA range three, short. Long rebound, Tullius. See, I think the Panthers are trying to fall in love with that three-point shot. They need to attack, get those bigs down low for Pleasant Valley in foul trouble, and get back to the free throw line. Marshawn on the drive. Kick to Tullius in the corner, charge. Nice job by Martin drawing the foul. Marshawn's first. Both, team kind of, both teams kind of looking to grab the momentum in this fourth quarter. No one really establishing yet. A really nice back and forth game here. The crowds are almost waiting, looking like they're waiting for something to happen. Yeah, they're waiting to explode. Holmes, that could be the thing. <laughs> Holmes, first three since the first quarter. 
has made it a five point game. Tullius around a pick by Olsen. Marchant. Marchant cut off. Swings, Tullius. Tullius on the drive, gets another pick from Olsen. Can't finish. And Olsen the foul. Yeah, it's a tough foul right there by Chad Olsen. I'm trying to make the hustle play, but you got to realize where you are on the court and not pick up a cheap foul like that. Timeout on the floor. 30-second timeout called by Pleasant Valley. They will have two remaining. They trail by five. 4.50 to go in the game right here on PlayOnSports.com. PlayOnSports is on Facebook and Twitter, giving you news and information and links to great highlights. Follow us at Play on Sports on both Facebook and Twitter. You can also access thousands of live and on-demand games on YouTube at youtube.com slash playonnetwork. Keep up with all the high school action every week from your destination for high school sports, playonsports.com. Jeff Kurtz alongside Nick Dobas. We have nine games in the books. We're four minutes and 50 seconds away from a Division II title for one of these two teams. Chico has won four in a row. Kirk Bruckler in his fourth year as the head coach for the Panthers has never tasted defeat in this game. Jeff, I think you said it best. Both, I feel like both crowds are watching like a tug of war right now. Yeah. Both, of, both crowds are waiting for their team to just pull away, take all the momentum and not run off with this thing. But both teams are stalemating each other quite nicely. It's punch, counter punch. And just when you think I mean, Chico had a nine-point lead in the later stages of the third quarter. Then Tullius hits two threes, and it's a three-point game. So Chico fans weren't celebrating too much at that point. <laughs> no, and everyone's kind of holding off their celebration. Just yeah, a lot of anxiety in the crowd. Martin bringing the ball up the floor. Holmes looking for Welch. Instead gives to Martin on a high-low. Left side, Binsfield. 20 on the shot clock. Holmes, a couple dribbles between the legs, kick corner Binsfield. He's going to drive, spin move into the key, takes it all the way. Oh, what a nifty spin move by Binfield right there. Got to love it when the little guy gets a nice move on the inside and lays it in. 4.15 remaining. Nice pick by Eldridge. He's checked back in for Olsen. Tullius was wide open in the corner, and Habib couldn't find him. Now Habib needs some help. DeArmond gets a step, takes it all the way on Welch. Layup is strong, battle for the loose ball. We got a loose ball foul. Yeah, DeArmond might be complaining a little bit, but he had the strong move, but kind of dipped the ball down to go for the ice cream scoop. But the Panthers had none of it. The ice cream fell off the cone. It certainly did. 3.56 remaining. Pleasant Valley needs a bucket. They trail by seven. Tullius open in the corner. This could be the guy. Three-pointer in and out. Rebound Holmes. And now Chico let, uh, content to let a little time come off the clock. Uh, even though Tullius missed that one, he's got such a quick release. Makes it really tough to defend. Welch, straightaway Martin. Martin gives to Karata Kelly. 17-footer from the left elbow short. Rebound to Armin. And a steal by Bensfield. What a read by Bensfield. Goes up for the layup. It looks like the Panthers are going to take a timeout here after the big turnover. Bensfield has had two steals when he's read the eyes of the passer and has stepped in front. You cannot afford to make a nonchalant pass around Tanner Bensfield. No, he's had, a, as I mentioned earlier, he's had a couple of those steals where he's just playing that safety position, reading the eyes, and his anticipation is almost second to none in this game. 55-46, can Chico make this nine point lead hold up this time, Nick? Well, they need to extend from a nine point lead and beyond if they really want to put this thing away, because every time Chico has said we can do good, Pleasant Valley said we can do better and has really answered. So the question is, can Chico really establish their dominance that they in the fourth quarter, which they have in the past this season, and really take this thing away? They've outscored them by 
Was it 20 in the fourth quarter? What did you say? It was 26 points in both fourth quarters in the previous meetings. Pleasant Valley has done a pretty good job hanging with them, but it kind of looks like the gas is running out of the tank a little bit for the Vikings. And they're running out of time. 3.10 left. They need a bucket here. Marshawn around a pick by Eldridge. Long three ball. Good. That's a good start. Six point game under three minutes left. Now Chico going to a slowdown. Yeah, slowing them down kind of hurt them in the early part of the second half, but the clock is their friend right now. Corner Martin, three-pointer, in and out. Rebound, Binsfield, there that kid is again. And he stepped, no, did he travel? It is a travel. Oh, that's unfortunate. Tip of the cap to Binsfield. Willing to get his nose dirty with the bigs down there. Unfortunately, I think his toe was just on the line. That was a big, big break for the Vikings, though. 2.35 left. This is Kettle in the game to Tullius. Against the man-to-man, -man. Tullius picked up on a switch by Welch. Eldridge has Martin in the post, is trying to get open. Here's Marchant, floats one up, draws the foul. That gives Pleasant Valley to cut into the lead while the clock is stopped. That foul is on Tanner Binsfield, his third. Each team with six team fouls, so we're shooting free throws the rest of the way on non-offensive fouls. And Blake Marchant at the free throw line where he's three out of four. And he makes it four out of five right there. Still a two-possession game, and will be if Marchand hits this free throw. He does. 2.16 left. Martin into the front court. Into the post, Holmes. Holmes fade away, no. Rebound, Binsfield to Welch. Welch goes up for the layup. Pinfield undeterred with that third foul and it has been grabbing some critical boards here for the Panthers. Nobody is putting a body on Binsfield. Six point game. In the corner, Tullius for a three short. Rebound underneath Habib for the putback. Back and forth we go. And Vikings can't trade points, though. They need to get some stops here in order to tie this thing up. A timeout called by Pleasant Valley. They trail by four with a minute 37 left. How about Tanner Binsfield? Well, someone just needs to put a body on him. Obviously, he's not the biggest guy on the court, but he's definitely playing with the biggest heart right now, making the hustle plays. He's got to be careful with those three fouls, but he's definitely has made a huge impact here late. You know, Binsfield and Welch have been the unsung heroes of this game for Chico. Welch had five offensive rebounds in the second quarter. He had eight points in the third quarter. He's got 14 for the game. Now Binsfield steps up in the fourth quarter with three offensive rebounds, four points. He has 11 total. And that's really a mark of a good team there. You know, when you have, you know, one of your top scorers like Holmes, who's been struggling through most of this game, has found some momentum late, but has really been struggling, that's when you need your utility guys to step in, guys like Welsh, guys like Binsfield, to make those big plays, and those, those players that really form a good team and potentially a championship team. Four players in double figures now for Chico, Karata Kelly with 12, Welch with 14, Binsfield 11, Holmes has 12. Eldridge, 10 points, all in the first half for Pleasant Valley, Tullius with 12, Marchant with 17. Yeah, Eldridge has been surprisingly quiet, and that's not been a good sign for Pleasant Valley. Chico's going to pick up, or excuse me, is going to watch Pleasant Valley drop back, and Chico will be content to walk the ball up the floor again. A minute 30 to go. Holmes out high, guarded by Habib. Martin with 20 on the shot clock. Tullius on defense. Here's Holmes on the drive. Spin move into the key. Takes it all the way. Kick corner outside Martin. This could be a dagger. No. 
Oh, but Welch, another rebound. Karata Kelly drives all the way in, reverse layup. No, Welch the follow, we got a foul. Welch, once again, being Johnny on the spot with the rebound. And it gives the Panthers an opportunity at the free throw line, but Karata Kelly looks a bit shaken up after that spill down low. A minute two left. That foul went against Eldridge, his third. Karate Kelly makes the first. Coach Bruckler was concerned about Pleasant Valley's rebounding. He didn't mention anything about his team's offensive rebounding. They have been all over the glass on the offensive end, in particular Welch and Binsfield. They really have, and it's been the difference late in this game. Karate Kelly makes it a six-point affair. Under a minute to go. Pleasant Valley trails by two possessions. Tullius frontcourt to Eldridge, who loses the ball. Now you got a foul. Karata Kelly with it, and he is fouled. There have just been points in the game, lapses in concentration on the part of Pleasant Valley, not grabbing the ball strong, and Chico always goes hard for the ball. Yeah, they've really, Chico has really capitalized on the Vikings' mistakes. And one of the keys going into this game was, could Pleasant Valley play a complete game against these guys? And it just looks like the Panthers have been a little bit too much to handle. A lot of time left here with 45 seconds, but it's starting to lean a lot towards the Panthers' way. It's a three-possession game right now as Karate Kelly makes the first one and the second one. Seven points in the quarter for Barack Karate Kelly. Tullius has got to push now. You can't run a motion offense with 40 seconds to go. No, they need to attack, try to get a quick two here. Marchant's going to put up a three short. That's Holmes. Holmes into the front court. Here's the give, Binsfield for the layup. And Binsfield, who's been the hero late in this game, puts the, puts the cherry on top. Marchant with 18 seconds left. Three-pointer air ball. Tullius fouled. Uh, you have to, once again, tip your cap to Binsfield, who's had a fantastic, great overall game, but fantastic second half for the Panthers when they needed him the most. Tullius at the line for a one and one. That foul was on Welch's fourth. Free throw short. Tapped out, Kettle three, no good. Habib, 15 footer, no good. Rebound Welch, of course. Throws it away, it's not gonna matter. That shot blocked by Welch, it's all over. Chico has won the ball game 63-53. Wow, Chico, even though they've had their moments of doubts in this game. Jeff, do you get the game ball for I this I get one the game ball, call? apparently. <laughs> Lands right on our bench. <laughs> Even, even though the Panthers had struggled a bit at times, they really find some key play from the, from the depths of their bench and from their utility guys to out-edge a very scrappy Pleasant Valley team. Play on sports.com post-game show coming up in just a few moments, folks, after the awards ceremony and the trophy presentation. The winner for the fifth year in a row, the Chico Panthers the boys' Division II champion, they will host a game in the state playoffs next week. Pleasant Valley will be on the road. You've been following the action on your destination for high school sports. Play on sports.com. The post game in just a few moments, folks. Please stay with us.
back here on PlayOnSports.com. It's a PlayOnSports.com postgame show, and I was just adjusting my player of the game, Clayton Welch's microphone, but that's the only thing he needed adjusting in his game today. 14 points and about 125 offensive rebounds by our count today. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. What a game you guys played. There was a lot of conversation beforehand that you need to watch out for Pleasant Valley's rebounding. But it turns out you guys, we need to watch out for your rebounding. You, Tanner Binsfield, and others did a great job crashing the offensive glass. What was the key? How were you guys able to get in there? We just talked about it all week, um, and we worked at it. We have a drill called, uh, it's like from Michigan State, and we used it, and we used it over and over all week, and it helped us a lot. Well, whatever Michigan State did and Tom Izzo's got going on over there, you guys replicated it in spades. As you guys were looking at this championship game, a lot of championship history at Chico High School. You're a sophomore on the team, the youngest player on the team. Was, was there more excitement for you coming into this game today as compared to maybe some of the juniors and seniors who've been here before? What was your mood like coming in? Uh, I'm always calm before a game. I think it's more exciting for the seniors because it's their last game against PV. They were pumped up, and it was like the first game I've got pumped up for. It, was, it felt nice. What was the difference in the game in your mind? As you guys were going along and executing the game plan, when did it start to turn in your favor? Um, I don't really know. We just, we just kept grinding. We kept getting rebounds, and it just came along to us. We started pushing the ball, which really helped, and then we just started getting rebounds and rebounds, and it helped out a lot. This, it seems like what you just said, a grinded-out game, was more like the flavor of this game as opposed to maybe games where you guys are getting up and down the floor. Had you had games like this over the course of the year, or was this really one where you'd say you had to grind it out the most? Uh, definitely we had to grind it out the most. We had to get the, these boards. It was back and forth. They started coming up on us, and we just had to keep going. How big a win is this for you guys, per, for you personally, and then for the team overall in terms of your goals for the year? It's my biggest game ever. I love it. And for the team, I mean, we, we still got a long journey, so we'll see. State playoffs start next week, but Clayton Welch, my play on sports.com. Player of the game, an outstanding performance, double digits points, and a lot of offensive rebounds. We lost count, Clayton. Congratulations. Thank you very much. We'll be back wrapping up here for the day, the weekend, and on the postgame show in just a few moments, folks. Please stay with us. Back here on PlayOnSports.com, the postgame show wrapping up from a full weekend of basketball in the northern section. Jeff Kurtz rejoined by my broadcast partner, Nick Dobas. Nick, just speaking to Clayton Welch, he said, we practice offensive rebounds by doing a drill that Michigan State does. <laughs> I might need to do that in my house so I can actually get to the refrigerator and beat my boys there sometimes so I can actually <laughs> grind out that last cupcake in the fridge. But a really an outstanding performance on the offensive glass by Chico. That seemed to be a big difference maker. Yeah, well, it's never a bad idea to take a page out of Tom Mizzo's book, but they certainly got some key performances from their role players tonight when they really needed it, especially since Jesse Holmes kind of struggled a bit there in the second and third quarters. And also a big performance by you know, Binsfield also came up with some critical plays there at the end. Pleasant Valley, how, how tough is it for them? Every year, you know you're going to play Chico, you're in the finals against Chico, and yet they keep running into the wall called the Chico Panthers. Yeah, I mean, it's tough. I mean, facing them every year and losing the last few years and stuff, but you got to give it to the kids. They came out, they knew their opponent, they fought really hard, they had some really great opportunities to win this game. They kind of got away from their identity a little bit in the second half, especially going away from Eldridge, who was silent pretty much in the second half, but they're a decent team, and they should, they might be a tough out in the next week's tournament. Well, the state tournament start ne starts next week, folks, and as we wrap up our coverage for the northern section, I invite you to tune in for our state finals coverage on March 22nd and 23rd. We will have all 10 championships for you from the, actually 12 this year. They're the open division, a new division for boys and girls, then divisions one through five at the championship level. Chico sweeps the evening games. The girls upset Pleasant Valley. The boys hold serve and win their fifth 
title in a row. As we wrap up the evening here on PlayOnSports.com, I'd like to thank everyone who made the broadcast possible over the last two days. Our camera people have been Jared Nelson, Daniel Luna, and Justin Barney. Our producers, Ron Borges representing our producing team, Jared Nelson, doing some producing as well. For all of our broadcasters, Adam Levine, Bo Fertig, Frank DiRienzo, and my broadcast partner, Nick Dobis, I am Jeff Kurtz saying so long from Chico State University the home of the Northern Section Championships. We're your home for high school sports in California, folks. Playonsports.com. Good night, everybody. One match away from immortality. This is a total team effort. One, two, three, two, three, two, three, two, three, We're gonna come at you. One shot at this.